Hey guys, Karan from Mobi Scrub here and I've got the Galaxy A50 with me and I'm going to unbox it and review it for you. So this phone comes in two variants and I've got the lower 4 gig variant with me which is for 19,990. It comes with most new features like the teardrop notch, industrial fingerprint sensor, a triple rear camera and a massive 25 megapixel front facing camera. But the real question is whether it's worth the price. Well, let's find out. So that's the Galaxy A50 guys and it seems to be a pretty interesting back. People are either going to love it or hate it. Alright, a 15 watt fast charger which is good to have considering it's got a 4000 mAh battery. Now you get your regular earphones, these are not the in-ear earphones, just the ordinary ones. And then a Type-C USB cable for data syncing and charging. The ejection pin, and that's pretty much about it. Now there must be some documentation but what I'm interested in is the rare case panel. So it is one of those rubbery bendy uh, cases and yeah it's basically soft, it's not one of those hard cases that are there so you have a good grip with this on. Alright guys, so that's the A50, let's just take the covers off and see how the device really feels. But first impression, I gotta say, the rainbow effect on the A50, it's quite unique, it's not subtle for sure and putting the case on might make it a bit less loud but it still would shine. Also this is all plastic. So it would be really interesting to observe how the shine on this back panel stays as the phone gets older, you know, with all the buffing and the scratches that come on it. But it's actually quite nice to hold this device. It's not bulky at all, easy and ergonomic to hold and doesn't feel too heavy despite the 4000 mAh battery. It's in fact quite thin and feels pretty premium to me even at this price point. Now you do get the earphone jack, you get the Type-C port and a speaker grill at the bottom. Also, this is a dual SIM device so you can run two SIM cards at the same time and you can mount a 512 gig micro SD card to expand storage. And an overall aluminum frame that looks and feels quite sophisticated to me. And guys, just again, the back is quite reflective and I think it's one of those subjective things. Some people are going to love it and some would not. So if you're thinking of buying one, do explore the color options in the Galaxy A50. Alright, let's talk about the front. So it's just a notch and all display. You get a nice massive 6.4 inch Super AMOLED FHD Plus display which is as awesome as it can get at this price point. Now the 6.4 inch massive screen ensures that you get a nice big immersive screen. So watching movies or playing games is going to be a lot of fun. Now the AMOLED part takes care of delivering saturated, high contrast, vivid display. So you get really nice deep blacks and the colors are just popping. Now the FHD Plus screen resolution just means really sharp display. So all your games that you play in full HD, um, all the videos that you play in HD quality, you get really good details while watching them uh, right in front of you. And the screen is super bright so if you're outdoors a lot in the sun, you can easily see the display without any issues and there is adaptive brightness. And now let's get on to the software. So this is running Android 9 Pie and the first thing you see is the always on display so I'm really glad that it's there. Then there's lock screen stories. Basically every time you unlock the phone you see a new wallpaper. Now some of the content is pure wallpaper and some are sponsored stories from advertisers. So if you want to know more you can just swipe and then look at the details and you know you can just browse through more of these with simple swipes or you can just unlock the display. Now there is in-display fingerprint sensor and face unlock. They might not be as fast as you would have seen in you know the more expensive phones like OnePlus and the new S10 Plus um, but they're pretty accurate so it, do it does take a second but it works fabulously. Moving on as I said you get Android 9 but you also get Samsung One UI right out of the box on the A50. That's awesome because Samsung has been giving One UI to its flagship phones as of now but the fact that the A series has come with it that's really good. With One UI essentially you're able to use the phone with just one hand and you know everything is moved to the lower half of the screen so you can easily access using just your thumb. Now that's the whole motivation behind this One UI. You also get a built in night mode so everything changes to dark mode which is really easy on the eyes and saves you some battery. Now there are more things that are new on the One UI and you can go through another video that I have. There's a card in the top right corner you can just use that. Now the UI in general is super smooth, response to touch and animations and transitions are all pretty seamless. The phone does not come with too many preloaded apps and that's good because you get the option to download whatever you want. But yes, there are some basic Samsung goodies that, which are actually quite useful in the entire Google suite of apps and then there is also some Microsoft uh, apps that are loaded. 
and you do get the Bixby Home as well as the Bixby AI that responds to your voice. So you can say hi Bixby to wake it up. And there's also Samsung Pay Mini, but that does not come with the functionality of, you know, just tapping on the credit card machines to make payments. Let's talk about performance. The A50 is powered by a 2.3 GHz octa-core Samsung Exynos processor and with either 4 gigs of RAM or 6 gigs of RAM. And that's just about decent, you know, the performance benchmark scores are just indicative. The software also does quite a bit to optimize performance and deliver that experience to you. Now I'm just going to try out some regular high quality HD games right in front of you and show you how the phone performs. Now I'm playing the Modern Combat 5 right now and it's extremely smooth. Even the quality of the display is pretty sharp. The details are very good. All the gradients that I see, the textures that I see, the smoke, the flares, uh, you know, all of that actually quite nice. You can see how the display is moving so smoothly. It's really swift. Um, the response to touch is amazing, you know. And uh, yeah, again, the lens flares that you can see, the colors actually, just have a look at that. Really good. And see how smooth it is, you know, it's just reacting so well to my touch. So that talks about performance already. Now, look at the way the smoke is rising and all of that. Really, really smooth. I also started playing Asphalt 9 and again, no issues whatsoever. I don't experience any frame rate dropping. Um, it's pretty smooth, reacts pretty well to touch. And uh, yeah, you can see all the effects that are happening, the shadows on the ground, you know, that's it's all pretty smooth. And if you didn't notice, the notch does not really come in the way of your gaming. You do feel completely immersed into the whole thing. Now, I also, of course, played PUBG and it plays under high graphic mode, which is brilliant. You know, a lot of other phones in this price segment have struggled to play PUBG in high graphic mode. So this is pretty good already. Uh, again, the colors, if you see, all very punchy, very vivid, uh, response to touch, amazing, texture and detail, again, extremely high. Look at the sky, the color gradients up in the sky, all pretty good. So yeah, I think whether it's multiplayer online gaming or, uh, you know, just high graphics and dynamic gaming, all of that, I think the phone's able to handle it pretty well. And I think it's been about 15 minutes that I've been trying out these games. The phone's just not hot at all. I mean, the temperature is as normal as it was when I picked it up. So it doesn't feel very hot or anything. It's just normal, which is, I think is, is a great thing. And of course, it's got 4000 mAh of battery, which means you could game for quite some time. And even if you do start losing battery, it's got fast charging. So you can restore power pretty quickly. Coming to the camera is where things get a little interesting. So the triple camera system at the back, each lens has its own benefit, but the real deal is the ultra wide lens that they've integrated into the whole system. You know, uh, basically it allows you to shoot more in a single frame without going back. So that's a really cool addition. And in the front, you get a massive 25 megapixel lens, which is just amazing. So here's an example of what an ultra wide shot can do. Of course, it applies more to landscapes, but I did take a couple of shots indoors, outdoors, daylight, nightlight, and here are those right in front of you. Well, of course, you're the best judge and I'm gonna have all of these pictures available for download in the link in the description below. But in my personal experience, I think the pictures came out pretty well. Uh, they're slightly on the warmer side, but again, nothing that cannot be corrected using filters or just some white balance. Of course, you shouldn't have the need to, but again, you know, all cameras are different and some people like warmer tones, some people like cooler tones. I, in general, really liked all the shots that came out. I think they captured detail pretty well. And for a camera that's, for a smartphone camera, which is not too high up in the price, I think it did a pretty good job even during night light. So look at the lighting conditions. It's pretty dark. It's actually nine or 10 in the night. And I think the shots came out really well. They're not too grainy, uh, but yeah, I think they're just really decent for this time of the day. And quickly diving into the camera software, so you've got all the modes here below. Of course, all of these are editable. You can remove these from the list if you want. But yeah, you've got your video, live focus, pro mode, panorama, hyperlapse, and slow motion. Uh, you've also got the switch to go from normal, normal mode to ultra wide mode. It's just a click of a button, so it's that easy. And then you've got your settings, flash, timer, aspect ratio correction, as well as filters in the top. The battery on this thing is a 4000 mAh battery, which is actually pretty good, for, you know, given the processor and the display here. So the battery will easily last you from early in the morning all the way to midnight. 
So if you're like a regular user, you know, you have a bunch of social media accounts, you're WhatsApping all day, listening to some songs, connecting to some Bluetooth headsets, the phone would easily last you the day and you won't have to worry. Overall, I think the Galaxy A50 is a good looking phone, that is if you do like the back panel, with ample focus on camera and its capabilities. The display is obviously amazing with its big screen AMOLED, bursting of colors and a really significant screen to body ratio. Even from a performance perspective, you did say that all videos and games could be played in high quality and high graphics settings, so definitely the performance is also at par. Now the price point is something that people might have concerns with. They might be considering Xiaomi phones, which definitely offer more value for money. But Samsung does come with a premium of more credibility, more trust, and just better post-sales support that other companies can just not match up to. So again, it's all in your hands. I've given my opinion. See you in the next one.